Welcome back to another episode of Cobra Kai Companion, and I am Peter. I am Brianna. And you guys, we have a very special interview today. Brock Duncan, who plays Zach Thompson from Cobra Kai Season 4. How are you doing, Brock? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, doing well. Um, let, let's, let's start off with this. You, your character, Zach, is, um, is a new character, Season 4. Um, Griffin, who plays Anthony, has been around since Season 1. What um, what has your reception like in the fandom as a new character? Um, well, you know, ever since I announced that I was going to be on the show, people went crazy. I mean, you know, it's it's been really crazy and overwhelming, but in a good way. Overwhelming in a good way. I've really loved all the all the all the fandom and everything that's going on. I, I really enjoy it. Are you getting like um because because your character um kind of peer pressures Anthony to being a bully, you know, basically your character is looked at as a bully. Have you been getting it like any kind of kind of mean messages uh on online as well? I know some of the kids have in the past as well. Yeah, I heard I heard a few like on Facebook and on Instagram, people have commented like this dude is worse than Thanos. Like there have been some pretty funny, clever and mean comments that I've laughed at, you know, I have humor about it. So it's, it's really, it's really fun to look at some of those comments. Yeah. Uh, you said you kind of, you know, everything kind of um, exploded for you with Cobra Kai and everybody went nuts when you said you were going to be on it. How did you go about the um, audition for the part of Zach? Oh, for the audition. Well, that's a funny story because they asked in the, in the character description, it was a big, buff and intimidating guy we almost did an audition because i'm not big buff or intimidated <laughs> and so we almost did an audition but we said you know what whatever let's just go for it and i got it no i think i think i had a call back and then i got it and I, I was really excited but i was also really surprised that i was able to get a bully character like that yeah i actually I like that they went against that because like um, in season one, Kyler, you know, the stereotype is like Asians are like the model citizen student, what have you, you know, they're great in academics and all that. Yeah. Kyler is, is, is uh, the bully for, for Miguel. Yeah. Right. And so they kind of go against type. So I do like that. And it would have been very interesting to see someone much taller and that would kind of make sense, too, to see Anthony follow somebody taller. But I think that says a lot about Zach, too, to, to be somebody smaller yeah. than Anthony. And Anthony actually listened to him. Yeah, he's, he's mentally intimidating, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah Not so no, much absolutely. physically, but, yeah. but he's very, maybe he does a lot of peer pressure and threatening, maybe. Yeah. yeah. He's now, the mean um, one that comes up with all the insults. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's the roasting king. Yep. Um, did they give you uh, any anything to work with in terms of your backstory for season four? Um, you know, anything about Zach, or did you have to kind of make up anything for yourself to play the character? I I, I definitely made up a lot of stuff. I didn't necessarily focus a lot on like while, while doing the lines, I was focusing on the dynamic between me, Anthony, and the other characters that I was working with instead of, although sometimes I'd bring up, I'd make up like a fake backstory kind of, not, not really anything much, but maybe when being peer pressured, I would bring in like, maybe Zach was peer pressured as a child or something like that. You know, maybe he's used to being a bully because he's been bullied, if that makes sense. Yeah, so yeah. I, I kind of, went along with that. Um, it, digging into your process a little bit and into your background, you are incredibly young, obviously. Anyone watching can see this. Um, what? When did you start acting and what made you think that this was something that you really wanted to do? I started acting I don't know when I know I was I know I was younger for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I started acting maybe in 
second grade, maybe maybe I started acting or like around like like six, seven or eight, maybe around then, you know, I would just go in for auditions and my mom and dad are both actors. So uh, I we are we we got ourselves an agent. So that was uh, pretty convenient to have parents who are in the business and, you know, they know how to grab agents and get us set up with things. And also watching TV along with watching my parents on TV really inspired me to be an actor and do do what I love. So your, your family, I mean, you guys are a family of, of, of walking talents, right? And mm-hmm. off mic, before we started filming, you know, I introduced myself to you, to your mom. So um, your dad is Christopher B. Duncan, who was on the Jamie Foxx show. So people yeah. around my age who grew up watching that show is very familiar with your dad. Um, now, kind of growing up, is that something you were really aware of, of like your parents um, uh, being actors? Or was that something you're like, oh, that's a job. And you thought that maybe a lot of other people's parents were actors as well. Well, I always thought as my dad as dad, you know? And so when we would go out in public and sometimes he'd be noticed, people would come up to him and be all crazy and be like, you're, you're, you're Braxton, you know? And so it was really, it was exhilarating to see my dad being like noticed in public and popular and a lot of followers on Instagram. And so it was, it was really cool. It was really cool to see. And I think it's never, it's definitely slipped my mind that, you know, like, yeah, he's, he's well known. And I think growing up, I don't think I saw everyone was like, oh yeah, everyone has this, you know, everyone's parent is an, is an actor. But I, I find it interesting, you know, like some of the really, really big stars, you know, Michael Jackson or Will Smith, his, their children probably just think of them as, as dad. You know, and, and the same goes for me. You know, I think of my dad as dad, but the public thinks of him as like, wow, he's just, he's insane. You know, he's popular. He's, he was on his TV show, so he's regular. So, yeah. Yeah, that must be really cool to see. Um, you mentioned you started um, acting prob- probably about second grade. Now, you're also very uh, musically uh, uh, talented as well. Uh, now, and you wrote a song. Was it a, a Christmas song? Um, I was working on a Christmas song actually and I wanted to make a Christmas song because you know just I wanted to make a song and so it was Christmas time and so I just riffed on the piano and I I ended up posting it. Do you have a preference um, between music and acting? Oh that's a hard one. You know I think if I were to pick between music and acting, I think I would, I think I would go with acting. I think I would go with acting. I think acting is, it's really dear to me. It's a really fun thing to do with music. It's, it can be really hard to come up with something and hard to, you know, mix some things. So I think acting would not only be a great thing to do, but it's, it's an easier process as well. So Although it's difficult, but it is, you know. Mm. You do seem to have kind of a natural talent about you. You did a fantastic job within the first 30 seconds on screen, making (laughs) all the parents in the audience want to lock you in your bedroom until you're 18. (laughs) Um, So congratulations on that. Who are your (laughs) idols? Who do you model yourself after? Who do you want to be? Well, you know, Obviously, my parents are my biggest idols. I always look up to them. But then I would say more in the music world, Michael Jackson. More in the acting world. I love comedy. So um, Jim Carrey, for sure. Nice. Jim Carrey, for sure. Um, that's a hard one. That's a good question. Um, Jim Carrey is one of my favorites too. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Um, ever since, yeah, ever since I was a little boy, because in the mid '90s, that's when he was big. You know, The Mask, Liar Liar. Um, 
uh, Ace Ventura. You know, all, all of those I grew up on yeah, all from yeah. Dumb and Dumber. Um, you, you mentioned Michael Jackson as like an inspiration for music. What What are some of your favorite songs? Because I'm very curious. Because my um, my oldest son is almost 22. I, I know I don't look like it that, that I have a 22 year old son, but um, <laughs> I introduced him to Michael Jackson because we're also big Michael Jackson fans in this household. Um, I'm curious for your generation, what are uh, some of your favorite Michael Jackson songs? I would say I like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Mm -hmm. I like Blood on the Dance Floor. I love that one. Um, what is the one? Oh, I like, I like Want to Be Starting Something. Okay, oh yeah. That's, yeah. a, good That's a good song. That's a good song. I love, yeah. I love that breakdown. I love... Thriller has always been a favorite. Ghosts. I like the, I, I even listened to the full thing, I don't think. But recently, I found this song out recently. I really, really love the beat of uh, Unbreakable. Okay. By Michael Jackson. Are you familiar with uh, Give In To Me? Yeah, I've listened to a little bit of that. Yeah, that one's, that's, that's my favorite uh, Michael Jackson song. I think it's yeah. uh, uh, highly underrated. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's I, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, so great That's choices. in the Dangerous album, right? Uh, dangerous or Invincible? I think you're right. I think it is Dangerous. I think it is Dangerous, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I just have it on a playlist. So um, I don't have the, 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 the albums memorized, but I think you're right, Dangerous. Yeah. Uh, what about some modern, uh, you know, the kind of modern artists? Do you have anyone that you like now? Like well, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of um compare the weekend to like today's Michael Jackson a little bit, and he's even covered Dirty Diana too. Oh, did he really? He did. You gotta check that out. I'm gonna oh. have to send you a link if you didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll check that out for sure. Um, I actually, a lot of people have asked me for this, but I'm not into most of today's rap music. I like um. Things like Justin Timberlake, love Justin Timberlake, uh, as well as Bruno Mars. And I'm into that. I'm into that pop. I loved Bruno Mars's uh, latest album, the Silk Sonic. Oh, yeah. Silk Sonic's thing. That's a Fantastic. great one, especially. It's, it's a lot like the 80s. So yeah. I like that. I like that 80s kind of feel. Even older than that, some, uh, some of those. You know, you get some of those, uh, like uh, Bootsy Collins. So you got some of the 70s in there, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you got an old soul. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was just gonna say um when you started listing off your Michael Jackson songs um don't stop till you get enough that was the disco era that was like 1978 1979 oh so yeah I love that song what drew you into because you absolutely could have grown up with me in the 80s you would have fit <laughs> what drew you into that well when I would come downstairs, my dad would always be playing the radio or I would just hear it on the normal radio or in the car, you know, the TV, whatever. And what we always used to do, another artist I forgot to mention was we had a disc of Kenny Loggins live uh, in, the, in the Redwoods. We would always play that. Me and my brother and sister, we were really young, like one, two and three. And we would just start, you know, dancing to it and jamming out and just having a blast to it. And so that got me into 80s music as well as, you know, Spotify, they have those listening to the 80s. I would, I would go to that and I would explore some songs, explore some artists and listen to more of their songs. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. You're the, I think you're the, you're the first person I've ever heard of that, that started with Kenny Loggins, because then you've got Footloose, you've got, you know, Top Gun, you got playing with mm -hmm. the boys on there. I mean, you got some good stuff. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. yeah. Uh, what was that? Um, uh, the, the, the golf one? He, he, Kenny Loggins did a song on that one, too. I'm all right. Um, Caddy, yeah, Caddyshack. I'm all right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's from that's Caddyshack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one yeah, that the gopher dances to. Right. <laughs> um, uh oh. Which doesn't Stingray reference that one in season two? Uh, yes. Tim and Tim Bush are like the guys. Oh, there my we internet. Go. Uh, yeah, you froze for a second. So you. Yeah, um, there was a little bit of a freeze there. Yeah. So go back to what you were saying about yeah, Stingray. It's, it's, I, think, I think. 
You mentioned that Stingray said something about, uh, I think I'm all right in season okay. two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. dancing I think, to uh, it. I think people are starting to wake up. Okay. Yeah, let me know when that happens. I think people are starting to wake up and use the Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the, the, doesn't Stingray mention the Caddyshack or the Gopher like in season two? Yeah, he dances to it there in the hallway. Or so wherever oh. uh, at, at the... Uh, like Lowe's or or Home Depot or whatever it's supposed to be. Yeah, but right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, he mentions um, a lot of a lot of artists. Yeah, yeah. So Brock, you mentioned you know Kenny Loggins, Kenny Loggins and Stan Bush were like your two main guys in the '80s who did like these big songs um, for for all these classic movies. Now, how aware were you of the Karate Kid? Um, and Cobra Kai before you, you even heard about Cobra Kai? Well, I actually have never watched the original Karate Kid with Ralph. I watched the one with Will Smith and Jackie Chan. That one I was introduced to from a few friends, and I think my brother also introduced me to watch that. But um, in terms of Cobra Kai, I arrived on set and they brought all the kids over that were in my scene where we're in the where we're in my house and we're pranking Kenny they they brought us over and they go so I have all I have all of you watched Cobra Kai I was the only one that hadn't watched it yet I had I hadn't watched it yet you know and so I felt really embarrassed but but they said it was okay and so I went home and I watched like two episodes and I immediately fell in love with the show so have you gone back to watch the Karate Kid yet, the original? I have not gone back to do it. <laughs> I'm not going back to do it yet, and I got to do that. I got to do that. Oh, I've learned end. a lot from Cobra Kai. You know, they go back to all those flashbacks. It's almost like I know the entire story. Right. Yeah. We're going to yeah. have to re- to temporarily revoke your could have been an 80s kid card until you actually <laughs> watch the movie. <laughs> but, yeah. um, speaking of the other kids. To be you- fair, Brock. <laughs> Peter, what's that? You died oh, again. Oh. No, um, Brian, I was just gonna ask, uh, or not. I, uh, am I back yet? Sort of. Am I back? <laughs> A little bit. I can, I can hear your voice, but the camera's going. Oh man, <laughs> let me let me try to minimize it by turning off the Wi-Fi on my phone. Maybe that'll help. That's the problem with like the, you know, I, I, I have a lot of kids and um, I think they're starting to wake up and like pick up the tablets and, and, and all of that. Am I yeah. back yet? Am I, am I good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, all, all I was going to say was um, to be fair, I, uh, when season one came out and we spoke with a few of the people, we, we were finding out that some of them hadn't seen the credit again until they got the job on Cobra Kai and then they went back and watched the movie so it, it totally happens but um yeah. I, I am a little uh, I, th- I, th- I do find it interesting that uh, you know you're familiar with all the like these 80s touchstone type stuff that uh, the credit kid was one that you kind of miss at least the the original um, yeah i know a lot of people kind of poo poo on that remake you know with jackie chan and jane smith yeah. i like it just fine i just think that um jane smith and his quote-unquote love interest should have been a little bit older because they were trying to sell this on this like relationship of 12 year olds i feel oh like. yeah i get That's that it. i get that yeah yeah other I than that, that it was beautifully directed and wonderfully acted so i i don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say it is mm-hmm. yeah i get that so with season th- with season four what we saw was kind of we're, we're starting to age out the original children and now we've got this like next generation of young cast coming up and you are part of it so yeah how what kind of relationships friendships were you able to build um is there any one person that you know one kid that you find funny um always cracking up that kind of thing what kind of friendships are you building like in real life or in the show of in real life in real life i when when on set when i met everybody um, they were all hilarious. They were all really nice. And I bonded a lot with all of them. You know, I bonded a lot with uh, Jaden, Alex, Griffin, Milena. 
I bonded with all of them. And so it was really fun. But I have particularly really, really funny moments with Griffin. I remember really specific things that were hilarious with Griffin. Do you mind sharing some of those? Or if it's okay to share? Yeah. Um, I can think of some. Well, let's see. When we were on the bus during the bus scene, and we all stick our heads out laughing. Remember that in the, yeah. that, was the that was the first scene, yeah. And so Griffin, he, you know, we all have to take our masks off and we all have to look at the bus. And Griffin was like, "Oh God, everyone's masks, everyone's masks off. We could all get infected." And so he would get, he would get, you know, really, he would get really nervous. He'd stick his head in his legs. It was, it, it was really funny. But you know, we would all do the scene and then come back and he'd be like, "Mask on, mask on, mask on." And he put his mask back on. Um, and so I was cracking up when that happened. Um, and when we were both during the Balboa Park scene, along with the hallway scene, when I was running, <laughs> we, I looked like a complete dork while I was running. <laughs> and I, I said to him, I went, I cannot run. And he goes, me neither. Trust me, I cannot run. I do not want to run. And we were both, you know, just, we were both running and we were like, we can't do this. We can't do this. You know, I, I do have a question about that, that uh, very um, sequence. One, was it really locked? Because I feel every time I watch that scene, it doesn't really look locked, but you guys are like, ah, oh, you know, it's, it's locked because Candy jumps over the fence. You may not remember. It's a small detail, but like, it, it, I, I don't see a lock on the latch, but that's just me. But um. The, on the, the latch of, of the fence? Yeah, the fence. I, f I feel like there's no lock there, but I, I could be wrong. People will have to go back and, and, and check it out. Because you guys are like, oh, man, it's locked. I'm like, I don't see a lock. <laughs> we, said it, we said it was locked, really? You guys mentioned that it's locked or something like that. Yeah. I'm oh, almost, maybe. maybe. I'm, yeah, maybe we did like pull on it and we're like, it's locked. Yeah. Because then you, you guys go through like, uh, you know, this little hole in the fence that, that was now that fence, did, did somebody have to cut that or was that already there? When I arrived, that was there. So I don't know if they like if they did that beforehand or whether that was a fence that was already there and it was already cut. Yeah. I don't Do really remember, but no, I think I think it was a like pre-cut fence because there was only an amount of the fence that was still there. Do you get that uh, that parallel to your guys' scene? I mean, I know you you said you hadn't. Okay, so you get it. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen the, you know him being chased, and then you know Mr. Miyagi coming in. Except Dallas actually made it over the fence. Right. Yeah. And yeah. We were the ones that were lost. Yeah. They're doing the flip the script kind of thing, right? Taking something from the first movie and doing it differently. So. Put it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Um, one of the um other moments where you know like when we we first watched them the show we were trying to at least for me i don't know about brianna i was keeping an eye on like easter eggs and things like that and in the sequence where we see your tiktok zach's tiktok show the uh the prank on kenny and the milk coming out of his um out of his locker that's where it shows your username uh zach attack do you do you get any of those references at all to your character you mean Zach attack to my character? Yeah, just in pop culture in general, because um, you know your your character's name is Zach, and to me, as a '80s slash '90s kid, I immediately went to Saved by the Bell, you know, where there's a, a kid named Zach Morris, and on that show, he uh, he has a band called Zach Attack. So mm. when I saw that, I go, okay, it, th that's no coincidence. Zach has to be an inspiration from Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, I feel. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I noticed, I have a friend named Zach who actually has his social media as Zach Attack. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah I mean. I'll it, lead up. I'll lead it, up. So it, there are, I think that's popular when you have a name like Zachary Zach that you go like, especially in modern day, that Zach Attack, because it has a ring to it, especially Attack it does. Zach rhymes you know it really rolls off the tongue yeah you know but uh it, these these writers and the people on the show they're very creative so like i'm always reaching for 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 something but um yeah i don't know like uh your hair isn't quite like his too but you know he's kind of known for his hair and yeah. you got your thing going on too so yeah 
Yeah, I'll when you said you like Justin Timberlake, I was like, uh, that's a pr- that's appropriate. That's very appropriate. Um, <laughs> so obviously, you yourself are a very well behaved, very polite, very kind hearted young man. How much fun was it to come out and just be the biggest jerk you possibly could and get paid for it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, one of the funnest experiences of my life. One of the most fun experiences of my life. Um, and I think it was really cool to be able to play a character almost opposite of me, you know, being able to just, you know, roast people and, you know, even even hit people, even though, you know, it was fake. But I think it was it was really, really fun. It was really fun to be able to, you know, come out and just let loose as Zach. You, you just mentioned um, hitting. I, I forgot about that point where Zach I think doesn't he knee Kenny at the park yeah he needs him and then yeah so can you talk about that like what was that like um how many takes do you guys do that did you guys talk about like um any other alternate um punches because I think um I'm forgetting who, who plays Slade uh Logan is that Alex Alex it was AJ or oh, AJ. Lo- I think Logan is his like character's brother's name or something Logan Wang Anyway, there's a lot of names. Um, yeah. well, it was mentioned during the prom scene. I, I think uh, one of the characters mentions um, Slade's brother or something. Anyway, but mm. um, I know he, I think he elbows Kenny. Yeah, he elbows. I need him yeah. and then uh, Slade elbows him. Right. Did you guys do like uh, other takes? Was there any discussion about doing anything else um, during that moment? I don't think so. I mean, I went in. I went in for the knee, AJ elbowed him, and I can't remember if there was anything else that they wanted to do or they took out or they put in. Um, Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't think so, though. I don't think they put in anything. Yeah, it looked like a pretty simple stunt and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of alternate takes or multiple takes to get the exact shot they wanted, um, we have heard a rumor that someone threw a milk carton that landed absolutely perfectly, like better than was anticipated. So what's the story around that? <laughs> that was really surprising for me because I, I was pretty nervous to do that scene because there were two girls in front of me. And I think when I first hit it, it I think it went off the chair and spilled all over the bus not like all over but uh on the ground just a little bit on the ground and then I think it either took it either took me two or three takes to do but I threw it and it landed perfectly because Dallas's head was right here my milk carton hit the back of the chair and spilled on his head and when when we did that I was thrilled and I started celebrating with the people next to me I mean, it was crazy because they were celebrating with me because, you know, it was hard to do that, do that throw two seats ahead. Right. Especially because I don't do any, any sports or, or anything. So <laughs> that was really cool. That was, that was, that was really awesome. Yeah, it was like the perfect shot. Like everybody oh, yeah. everywhere wants to, to, to do that with their. Oh, yeah. Person. Oh, yeah. One of my uh, other favorite moments, because it, it's, it's kind of like in episode, um, in season two, uh, during the school fight, it's c- kind of similar to this, where in, in season two, uh, Hawk chases Dimitri around and, and all of that. You guys get a similar sequence in the library. Um, what can you uh, tell us about filming that sequence? And also, was that you that got kicked uh, b- back into the, the bookshelves? That was not me who did that, actually. That was my stunt double. And she, one of the scenes we did, she she ran in and she still had her mask on and you know she was still standing there and you know she pulls off her mask she throws it away and throws it to another person um but filming that scene it was really fun we were there for a while actually we were there for a a a long amount of time um it was really fun to shoot for sure you know running in there and then you know doing all those scenes having the lights off kicking punching pushing all of this stuff it was really fun to watch some of the other people do that, you know, standing behind the camera or just standing at a different angle and watching Dallas kick the heck out of AJ. 
Um, that was, yeah, that was really fun to shoot. Brianna, was that uh, you or me? It was you. Me, me go or I, I yes, think you I asked go. Him. You go. Oh, okay. Um, talking okay, so so that scene it it uh, it, it plays a little scary, right? Um, this one I, f I forgot to ask, and before I forget, you're the second person we've ever spoken with that appeared on Creep Show. Now oh. I haven't. Yeah, uh, the the first person was um. I'm trying to remember her name. She played Melissa in season two. Ah, uh, gosh, I, her name escapes me. She she was one of Johnny's dates um, from from season two. You know when he speed dates. Um, the one that like oh, the it, one it, that was, he to mess up the TV. Uh, no, no. She she was like uh, she the one that bumped into him and offered him a beer at the bar, and she buys him a drink, and she. Yeah. Jenna, 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 ooh, Jenna. Oh, something. yeah, yeah. She but bumps anyway, into yeah, him she was like thinking about her drink. Yeah. Right. She was also on Creep Show in an episode. Really? Um, yeah, she was. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. I, I saw that you you were also on that. Um, what can you share about your experience on Creep Show? Creep Show was awesome. I've I've always been into horror. I love horror. Oh, and so okay. that was actually my first um project. And so working on horror, you know, they had me be the Dracula they have the Dracula teeth the Dracula hair they all mean you know, all the makeup I love I love all that special effects makeup and, and everything that goes into it um changing my hair completely was a wow experience but it also at the end you know they put my hair back I didn't always have that 80s haircut going to school obviously although I think it was summer break but um I, I had like a really short haircut, you know, these sides were off and it was kind of just like right here. And so that was really interesting. Um, but the overall product I think was completely worth it. I, I love doing that show. I loved working with everybody on that show and I would do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's on shutter. If anyone's interested in checking that out, did you, um, get a chance to meet Greg Nicotero? I did. I did. Awesome. Yeah. He was, he was my director for that, for that episode. He was really nice to me. Um, I loved, I loved all of that. Um, everything he did for me, everything that we shot together, you know, he was really, really outgoing, really down to earth. And I loved working with him as a director. Okay. So, so maybe here's a chance to get your uh, 80s kid card back from, from Brianna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not in the business from uh, taking it away, but um, did you watch any of those 80s horror movies growing up? No. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I did not. The yeah, only man. one, the only one I watched, which I don't think counts, is Poltergeist. But I watched the remake. I did not watch the old one. I I, I think the I think the remake slightly scarier. I'm not gonna. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, and it, it might be, but you know, the original still had that curse where like half you know, the cast because, died. Um, so. Oh, yeah. I think I heard about that. Oh, you don't know about that stuff. It, yeah, I, it's think, a, I think I did hear about that though. Like, yeah, it was it was like stuff. a cursed, it was like it's supposed to be a cursed movie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If you start diving into like everything that's happened ever since that movie, it's pretty pretty nuts. Yeah, I think those '80s horror movies were um, pretty gory. Um, some some violent. Some sure. yeah, oh, yeah, I I don't I don't know if there's anything that I could think of in terms of a, a recommendation that that might be suitable for your age. Because uh, again, my, my son is I don't know five six seven years older than you, and I didn't let him watch any of that stuff when he was your age. Um, I I let him watch like thrillers, you know, that that were less scary, something like. Um, mm -hmm. The Frighteners, which came out in 1997 with Michael J. Fox, where he's like a he's a con artist that can see ghosts and he uses ghosts to help him con people out of money. But then it turns into a mystery, a, a whodunit. People start dying around him mm. and uh, he has to figure out who's who's killing people off. Mm. So um that uh, one I, that's a recommend to me you'll have to ask your parents I, I oh yeah i'll watch that for sure but i take that back actually i the only one that i can possibly think of is 
Silence of the Lambs. That one I did watch. That's that okay. That's a good one. Um, yeah, that one I watch. Ones that would definitely have to be approved by your parents. The three that I would recommend are the original Friday the Thirteenth, of course. Um, the original uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. You can see Johnny Depp's first paid acting role there. Um, and mm -hmm. Sleepaway Camp, which is just a dumb '80s like. It yeah because it, the, the horror got kind of dumb after a while, um, yeah. And, but then Sleepaway Camp really brought the dumb, you know, before Scary Movie did. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, you've mentioned several times just in passing, like it's just you know a thing that exists. M masks coming on and off, COVID protocols. Uh, you are growing up both in the business and in a post-COVID world. Um, how did that affect you? Were you comfortable with the COVID protocols? Did it did it interfere with your work or did you think it, it just kind of blends in and we're all used to it now? Well, you know, all of the projects that I've ever done or at least most of them, most of the bigger projects that I've ever done actually were during COVID. So all of the, all of the sets I've been on and most of the sets I've been on have been during COVID. And so I think, I think I'm used to it and it's definitely harder because you really, you know, they're, they're really cautious about it on set. Mm -hmm. And so you need to, you know, put your mask on, take your mask off at the right times. And, you know, when you're eating, you know, you just eat, put it back on and stuff like that. So I think working with them, it's not, it's not the biggest deal ever, you know, it's just, it's just over your face and whatever. Um, but I think it's harder to connect with some of the castmates sometimes when you're wearing a mask, especially, you know, with all the noise, especially when you're in an indoor set. That's all I can think of, yeah. Um, as we uh, get ready to wrap up, I have a, a couple more questions for you. Um, one of which, as, as Brock, as a viewer of Cobra Kai, uh, which, which dojo are you more in favor of? Miyagi Doug, Cobra Kai, or Eagle Bank? Um, well, I'm definitely not for Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai is too harsh and, you know, too tyrant. But Miyagi Doug, I feel, is like too calm. So I would go in the middle and I would pick Eagle Fang because not only do I love Johnny Lawrence's humor, I love. I think his way of teaching is more on the Cobra Kai side, especially since he sometimes pushes his students a little bit more or a little, a little bit more than Miyagi-Do. So I think I would pick Eagle Fang. I would either pick Eagle Fang or Miyagi-Do. Definitely not Cobra Kai. Although, <laughs> I think Zach would pick Cobra Kai. I think Zach like would that. pick Cobra Kai. I would pick Eagle Fang or Miyagi-Do for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like how you keep emphasizing not Cobra Kai. <laughs> not Cobra Kai. No not Cobra, Cobra Kai. Um, <laughs> so we have IMDb, which has all of your movie and television roles on it. Have you done anything on the stage? On the stage? Yes, I love the performing arts. I love singing. Um, I love dancing. I used to dance a lot back in, back in LA, and I used to dance a little bit like, like maybe two years ago. Um, and I've always loved being on stage. I did The Little Mermaid. Uh, recently, I did Frozen with, with my school, and that was a great experience. I played Kristoff. And Little nice. Mermaid, I played Flounder. And yeah, like in kindergarten, I played Scarecrow in uh, The Wizard of Oz. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've always loved doing that, and I really want to do that in the future as well. Oh, that's awesome. Those are some great plays to get your feet wet with. What was yeah. that last one? The last one I did in kindergarten or the last one I've done recently? The, the, the last one you just named. The last one I just named. That was, uh, I think, Scarecrow Scarecrow, in the, the, Wizard, the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, The Wizard of Oz. Oh, I thought I heard something else um, after that. Like, I, okay. I thought well, there was a Little Mermaid. I mean, I mean, the, yeah, The Little Mermaid and Frozen. Oh, no, frozen. Frozen. I, I, I think I think maybe you said frozen again and I heard something completely different but oh yeah. no, yeah 
Yeah, all, all, all things. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Wizard of Oz. I grew up with the Little Mermaid. I, I'm trying to get my three year old three year old daughter to to get into that. She prefers Frozen over Little Mermaid, but who am I? <laughs> um, one of the uh, other questions I, I had for you is, uh, you know, we've heard stories of um, when they were filming the tournament, uh, Kenny and Griffin would uh, like play Frisbee and stuff like that. Um, what were some things that you did um, when you weren't shooting, but were there on set that day, you know, just kind of, just kind of waiting? Um, let's see, during, during all of the scenes, I remember during, I think it was when, while we chased Kenny down the, down the hallway, um, I remember we had these director style chairs. We'd all sit there, sit in them, we'd all chat together, you know, we were, they brought us food. And so we, we would either be on our phones and eating or we just start talking and eating. Uh, I remember before we filmed our first scene together, we started talking about uh, Godzilla versus King Kong. And we, we all watched the trailer together and we were like, hey, who, who could that be? Who, who is that? You know, is there Mecha Godzilla? All that stuff. And I think during most of the scenes, it was just talking between cast, castmates, getting to know people, um, getting to set certain sets. Um, and just really, really communicating and socializing. That's awesome. Okay, bearing in mind, um, back, back to Cobra Kai, my, my final question about that. Um, all the interactions that we saw on screen in season four with Zach, Slade, Anthony, and the other one. Anyway, the four of you. Uh, which one of Marcus. those four? Marcus. Marcus. Yeah. Uh, which one of those four boys is the one in charge of their little mean clique? Do you mean like who's in charge of the entire group there? Yeah, which one of them considers himself the leader of the gang? I mean, I might be biased. <laughs> I might be a little biased here. But... I feel like I feel like I'm doing a lot of the manipulating for sure. I feel like I may have turned them into bullies in a way. Maybe I don't. I, I don't know. But I I feel like I I think that I am not the leader per se. I think we all do it. But like I peer pressured him into tricking Dallas. I peer pressure a lot of the people. And so I might be being a little biased, but it, you know, you know. Yeah, it, no, it, I, it, it, yeah probably Zach. <laughs> yeah, 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 probably, I, Zach, I probably it, Zach. I think it plays out that way. You do a lot of egging on and everyone kind of follows suit, even Marcus, you know. So I think, uh, I think, yeah, you're not necessarily leading by example, but everybody is following you. At least that's my, my perception, you know, watching yeah. the show. Yeah. Um, just kind of like learning all these, fantastic tidbits about you um you know having been on stage uh musically talented and you're you're into all, all these all these things what is what is a project that you would love to see yourself in you know like is there a movie um that you just love that you wish you could have been in or an actor where you're like oh my god I love that performance and how cool would it be if I was in that movie with them or that character I think what I, what I uh, in terms of movies, I obviously I couldn't because there's not really a part for me in there. Um, but I really enjoyed the not only the original, but I enjoyed the new ones as well. Uh, the Jumanjis. Mm, yeah, I would love. I love the comedy in the in the first two, and I love the storyline and the you know the the kind of vibe of the first one as well. Um, as in terms of movies, in terms of TV shows. I think it'd be cool to do a, a sitcom, even a sitcom or um, a dramedy even. That would that would be cool. Drama comedy. Um, or again, there's no parts for me, obviously, because you know I'm a kid. Um, but I think it would be awesome, awesome to do a show like Breaking Bad or Ozark or Game of Thrones. You know, all those shows that are, you know, really deep and, you know, really like 
consuming. You you know, you just can't take your eyes off of them. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all those shows and I'm a fan of all those shows. I mean, there's parts for you in there, but none of them are good. You know, like Breaking Bad, <laughs> immediately I think about the kid on the bike. It's, yes, yes, <laughs> I just thought of that. The yeah. kid on the bike and they see it and then yeah, immediately exactly. I mean, gone. Game of Thrones, you could be, a- you know, you, you could pick up pick one of the families, you know, you could be a Lannister, you could be Rickon. I could be Rickon or you know, so, something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that that'd be awesome. Um yeah. Again, it, you know, it sounds it sounds like you you are looking to be on some kind of a cultural phenomenon and get your name out there that way. And if that's what you're looking for, I would say congratulations. You've already got that job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, like I said, I was, I was really excited, and it, it's it's really cool to see like uh, like a family of of actors too, because you know that's that's your support system. You know, you you your your parents have gone through this stuff, so you have them to look to, you know, for questions and stuff, and that's only going to help you out, you know, with with your craft. And um, you know, I'm I'm really excited to to follow you uh, as an actor in your journey. So uh, we definitely look forward to seeing more projects with you in the future. Um, so since you are so young, you know, we, we've spoken with Milena as well. Um, what are some tips you can give to others that are around your age that are looking into uh, getting in the industry? Um, I would say, I would say a few things. I would say number one, mistakes, especially during auditions. I've noticed that when you make a mistake, not only do some of the directors and the producers and the people that are watching it, they they, they, they notice the mistakes. They know, they know mistakes, you know, they're natural. They, they, they'll laugh with you and they'll, they'll like it. You know, they're not judgy and obedient or anything like that. And so, you know, they see a mistake. They, they actually, they like it. I think, you know, they, they're, they're fine with it. It's natural. It's, it's, it's a natural thing to do. I think on set when, when you book, when you book a part, when doing, especially with drama and stuff like that, although I haven't done much drama, I've gotten this one a lot from my parents and that is communicate with the person you're talking to when you're doing a scene. You know, don't just say the lines like a robot. You gotta communicate, you gotta bring your own, bring your own things into it, or bring your own life into it and really make it real. Even if it is a comedy, because most comedy comes from realness. You know, it doesn't come from, did you guys hear the joke? Ha 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 ha. You know, it comes from actual laughter. It comes from a really good joke and it comes with communication. And it comes from speaking to the heart and bringing things from your life and putting it into the scene and showing people what you have. Say that's the number one up there. Yeah, fantastic. I'm going to echo Peter's comment from earlier. You truly are an old soul and you understand so many things it's, it's amazing you've got such a good head on your shoulders and it's fantastic to see thank you yeah all right so uh, that will conclude our uh, conversation uh with you brock and you know in the event we see zach show up in season five we would definitely love to have you back and and, and talk about that so so um, if you welcome the interaction, do you want to throw out uh, if you want to reach out or if they want to follow you? Your social medias. Oh, my social medias. Oh, yeah. Um, my Instagram is at Brock Daniel Duncan official. There we go. We'll and that's that same for my Facebook as well. And Brianna, where can people uh, find you or follow you? On media. Um, look anywhere you want type in Brianna 25 if it shows up it's me all right very simple right. Uh, for me I'm, I'm on Twitter at Cobra Kai pod and also check out our website Cobra Kai companion companion spell with the k.com for uh, all of our interviews links to our interviews we have upwards close to 100 on the road to 100 right now uh, interviews available again I mentioned uh, Milena uh, Rivero, who uh, played Leah in season four. Um, many interviews for, for you guys to check out. Sholo, Jacob, um, it, it's all there. So uh, thanks everyone for tuning in to this interview and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.